What's up everyone, my name is Alex, I'm one of the co-founders of MyInvestingClub.com and I want to let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two-hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's going to be available at MyInvestingClub.co, the link is going to be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. Yeah, so like this this webinar kind of goes with the last webinar, right? I mean, it, it's kind of like, I, it's like, I thought about just w doing this one later, but then it, that wouldn't make sense. Like they go together, so I should do them together. Anyway, but yeah, Tom can't be here today, so we're just gonna mosey on through some some lecture material. Anyway, so I'll go over the market sentiment. Uh, there's a, there's one thing I wanna talk about. I haven't done a trader topic segment, you know, just a little quick, you know, something I really wanna get off my chest kind of subject. So I want to talk about VWAP rejections for a, for a quick second. Then we'll go into some key traders of the week. I already just went over NNDM. And then, and then I want to get into the opposite of what we talked in la last week. Last week, we talked about range break and strategies and how to tackle them. Today, I want to talk about range hold, which is, you know, probably about, which probably matches about 75% of the traders in here. Most traders go for range hold strategies as opposed to range break because most, most traders that trade range break strategies they, they, they tried that in the beginning of their trading career and they lose and then they're forced to go into range hold. All right. So where were we last week? We were kind of in this, uh, this tug of war, right? Or yeah, we, we were kind of in this tug of war where, you know, I thought that the spy would kind of want to stay in the 280 to 300 range, right? That was the, that was the prediction for the week prior or for this upcoming week that, that the 295 stunting, stunting, that was kind of a fear of uncertainty about reopening. However, of course, everything, every, this is going to remain true for the, for the going couple months. Everything revolves around like whether or not we're going to have a second wave or not. That, this small cap battle, though, that we've been kind of tug and warring lately, it, it's honestly very healthy, right? It's honestly very, very, very healthy for the market because it means that everybody has to be on their toes. It means that there's fear in the market. It means that nothing can be taken for granted. It means that there's a trade for everybody. Right, this whole tug and war. It's not a full buyer's market. It's not a full seller's market. And when you're in the full buyer's market, you don't have to worry about it turning south. When you're in the full seller's market, you don't have to worry about it turning into the, you know, turning into the um, the bullish market that's going to squeeze the fuck out of you. You trade with the precaution that anything can happen. And that's that's honestly where I have the best um, the best market. Anyway, so last last remember last week we were like, you know what, the shorts are starting to win, but like we, you know, tomorrow. Tom and I kind of guessed that tomorrow was going to be the, the day that like kind of solidified what this next week was going to be, right? If we had a bullish Friday, you know, like we were in the short side, I thought we'd go back to the long side. Kind of think we got that because Friday we got SRNE, which is the major bull. That's, you know, the bull that kind of set off this week. So I, you know, I, before the shorts were starting to win and this week we did have kind of like revenge of the longs in a way, right? And so we're back to the tug of war. And, I, you know, I think that's a great positive. Because, you know, now we're back in that everyone's market. So one thing of note is when, when there is, and I think it was honestly a little bit of a surprise that, um, that longs fought back, right? Because we, we were starting to see a couple more offerings. We started to see a couple tanks and, you know, like, I think there was a little bit of a shock on Friday when SRNE happened and then NNDM and then surf, right? We kind of had that progression of where the money was flowing that there was kind of this little surprise and whenever there's a market surprise that's typically when range increases the range this week has been was is significantly higher than the range was last week last week was a comfortable range you know you didn't have to worry about super squeezers or super tankers we've had a, a drastic increase in range this week and i think that's due to the surprise that long's kind of you know regained some footing oh what, what this quote um harry's quoting me was that the action one yeah, so, and I talked about this. The control has been even. It's now a healthy battle between longs and shorts. We're getting surprisers and we're getting the tankers. So, yeah, the long chasers have been brutally destroyed, right? Stocks have been halting a lot more now as we're getting these cheapy runners, right? Um, because cheapy runners have tighter halt bands, right? And you guys have learned that over the last couple months that the cheap stocks have tighter halt bands. That when stocks have these halt bands and, and we're in this stock of increasing range, 
the market gets very violent, right? This, this market has been very violent to the upside and the downside. There hasn't been much forgiveness. And this is another cycle I, I'm going to probably add to the next webinar going forward. There's another kind of cycle that I want to illustrate, probably not exactly like this. I'll find another medium to illustrate it, but there is another cycle that goes in the market. And that's, I, I don't know exactly what I want to call it. Uh, I, I think I might want to call it a continuation cycle or a range cycle. We go in, the market goes in cycles. I'll add this to the market sentiment kind of section of the webinars going forward, but there's a cycle of range and a cycle of, it's range or continuation. That's one of, one of the, I don't exactly know how to pin it down with the correct word. I'll think about it later, but there's a range of like, you know, range continuation where we, we enter this market where you will get a lot of fuck you patterns where the, where the pattern will like the, the market will literally just go and straight up and like straight down. There will be no first bounces. There will be no opportunity for a pop for a, you know, you'll have those markets. You'll have that, this kind of cycle where, it, it's like, so it's chaser, chaser, sitting down, 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 down. You'll have these like, or like you'll have this like just straight up, you know, abolition of shorts to the upside and then it'll just fall. Or you'll have this market where it, it doesn't matter what happens. There's going to be no continuation. It's just the stock's going to go up to high a day, break, and then come back down, but then not, but then it won't tank. It's just going to come right back. We're going it, to, it's like the cycle of, of stocks that like to stay range bound or stocks that like to obliterate range. Or there's that middle, there's that middle area where stocks, you know, where it's a comfortable range, right? And I kind of talk about this for the week to week. There's a comfortable range, right? So we're in more of a, of an unforgiving market. Like, you know, if you don't stop out good luck, right? You're going to have a big loss long or short. So th that's something I want to start illustrating going forward. I just need to figure out the correct medium, the correct chart to show you guys, but we're in that kind of cycle right now, right? We're in a cycle where there, there is very little range forgiveness. It's a very, it's a very violent market. The, you know, one thing I've been noticing in the last week and genus really started it all is that offerings have been like surprisingly holding strong. And I don't know how much longer this is going to take or how long it'll last. This can't last permanently. Just straight up big money that doesn't let it. But the, the market has a way of having a cycle for everything. Like, because when something starts working for too long, people notice it and it gets arbitraged away at least for a certain time. And that's why there's cycles, right? Like, you'll, like there are, there are even some like cheap stock patterns where stock where cheap stocks will the thing about cheap stocks is that cheap stocks like my thesis for cheap stocks is that they nor most of them are going to die cheap stocks do not go from cheap to expensive cheap stocks rarely 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 ever gain traction but that's why every once in a while the stocks that do gain traction really blow a, a lid right because you can't just have an arbitraged market where everyone knows if it's a sub dollar stock and i mean sub dollar sub dollar stock is just going to die. Sub dollar stocks never go anywhere. A sub dollar stock never gets over two, right? There's that, there's that pattern in the market. And you'll notice that if you pay attention to like sub dollars, it's a pattern I notice about sub dollar, sub dollars. I just don't have the patience, like I said, to really take advantage of it. But sub dollar stocks, like any sub dollar stock that, that pops up, they typically die. Like they typically maintain the old classic pattern of that pump and dump up, 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 down, down, down kind of like that A-frame up, 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 down, 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 kind of straight up pump and dump. And a lot of traders in here, I know a couple in particular love to take advantage of it. But every now and then they're gonna, there's gonna be this dollar stock that just, I mean, just goes nuts, right? And that's the market's way of correcting itself saying that no, you don't get to do this forever, right? And so there, there's, there's an offset to every pattern. And otherwise, if there was a pattern that worked 100% of the time, it wouldn't actually exist. What are my thought? What are my thoughts when I take a range? When I when I trade a range break, do I use one bullet or try to scale? I'm actually more likely to go full size on range hold trades. To be honest, range break, I'm always a little bit skeptical, and most of my range break trades, I normally ease into it. I might start shorting half, and then add on confirmation, right? Or put a feeler on, like VWAP reclaims. I put feelers on, and I try to add to them, right? That's that's ultimately. A range hold, if I'm at a good price, I'll go all in, right? I'll go all in, meaning like like SRNE, right? Or SURF, right? Something like that. I put, I, put the, I put all the size right there. I have a good entry. I have a good average. Why do I need to scale? I got, I got the best average I want. I don't need to scale, right? 
what would what what would you say are the strategy with the best odds? Range hold, range hold strategies. Shorting tr- shorting into resistance and buying into support, and, and 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 being respectful of the range you're in and taking profits right and scaling out. That's that is the stuff. Those are the trading strategies with the best odds, right? And like a death candle short, right? A death candle is a break of the range, and then you're shorting into the bounce, expecting the new range to hold as the top or a first bounce. You're expecting the, the range is broken and you're expect now you're expecting the range to hold. When when you trade and expect ranges to hold, I think those have the best odds, right? History will kind of show that ranges hold more often than not. You just have to be careful about not getting stubborn and getting out when you're supposed to. All right, guys, I shall see you all tomorrow. Peace out. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.